Welcome to Real Possibilities with AARP Connecticut. Hi, I'm Elaine Warner, your host. I am the Program Specialist for Volunteer Engagement on staff with the nonprofit office of AARP Connecticut. And in just a moment, I'm going to introduce you to our special guest who's going to tell you about her experiences, they could be yours, with engaging with AARP. But first, I want to come back to Real Possibilities, the name of our program. You may know AARP as the American Association of Retired Persons, and indeed, many, if not most, of our members, uh, and if you are one of them, we want to say thank you, are retired, but many of our members uh, are also working out of choice or need as well. But AARP did a little rebranding of late, and the RP stands for Real Possibilities, meaning no one's possibilities should ever be limited as they age. And you're going to learn about that right here in your local community with experiences you can enjoy new possibilities in your life. And before I get to my guest, I just want to reference our founder, Dr. Ethel Percy Andrus, who founded ARP a little bit less than 60 years ago. What power one volunteer can have. She wanted to make sure that when people retired, they had uh, health and financial security uh, uh, benefits and they felt comforted that they could go on in life without being stretched with resources, particularly with health benefits. And she built an organization, an association that today is 38 million members strong and growing and at least 600,000 members right here in the state of Connecticut. So we're a high percentage of older Americans to our population right here. But Dr. Andrus's motto was to serve not to be served. So we have internalized that motto uh, very specifically in our uh, very robust volunteer program. We have uh, about 800 volunteers all told in the state of Connecticut. And so we are here in your local community today to let you know about real possibilities with volunteer engagement right here with AARP in Connecticut. So without further ado, I want to introduce my special guest, Vita White. Vita, welcome. Thank you. And Vita, um, I want to thank you, first of all, for your uh, contribution to AARP Connecticut. And, you know, Vita is a volunteer in her free time. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say we really, you know, we cherish your free time. We know it is your choice. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we're flexible mm -hmm. as to how you can volunteer with ARP. But uh, what I'd like to ask mm -hmm. you firstly is, what made you originally decide to uh, make that phone call, take the plunge, so to speak, mm -hmm. to uh, find out about uh, volunteer opportunities with ARP? Well, thanks, Elaine, for having me uh, on. One of the things that I got really excited about with AARP, I've been familiar with AARP for a number of years, even in my professional life before um, I became a volunteer. And so when I decided to um, leave my job and to retire early and to uh, become a, an independent uh, consultant part-time, I got excited about uh, looking at the second half of my life. And I wanted to do something that was uh, meaningful, and I called it hard work, something that was really important to me. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to use the skills that I had learned in leadership when I was working yep. uh, in that endeavor. And so AARP offered me opportunity for all of those things to combine it all. So I was able to um, uh, be an advocate for causes that are great for that demogra for the demographic that, I'm, that um, I represent now. Mm -hmm. uh, that was hard getting to accept over 50 and what that demographic meant. But well, I must um, say at ARP, it's cool to age. Yeah. One of the reasons I like to work there. It is. <laughs> a whole cohort group yeah. of people who are, you know, in the same uh, demographic and experiencing some of the same things, and I thought that was important. So um, it, it was a, an ability or a time to combine both head and heart work. And uh, so that was why I volunteered, raised my hand, and sort of dived right in. And we are really glad that you did. You. you know, when I, uh, again, I'm the program specialist for volunteer mm -hmm. engagement, as you know, uh, and some of the potential volunteers I talked to say, I don't want to do anything like I did before in work. Mm -hmm. I want it to be completely different. You just said you, want, you wanted to take some of the skills that you came to us right. with mm -hmm. uh, and apply them, and we're really glad that you did. Now, I know you went through what we call an ARP, an appointment process. Uh, because ARP Connecticut offers so many different mm -hmm. programs, we like you to uh, explore initially so you can see where mm -hmm. the fit is good. But I know you had a uh, uh, over the phone interview, you had an mm -hmm. in person interview, mm -hmm. and then you started to attend some events. So, how did you find that appointment interview process? Did that work well for you in deciding you know, right. where you wanted to end up? Right. I thought it did. It worked um, very well um, because the conversation was very personable, uh, there was no pressure. 
it was um, allowed me to be flexible in terms of what I wanted to do because of course when you first volunteer you don't know what to do because there's so many opportunities but you don't know what they are so exactly. it allows you time to explore it and I had several um, in-person interviews um, what was exciting about those was the opportunity to talk not only about um, what I could bring, which was very minimal at that time, but to understand the full scope of uh, what AARP was doing in Connecticut and in the nation and how that might fit in. It was also a uh, philosophical kind of conversation as well mm -hmm. that got me excited about the possibilities because how often do we as individuals get the opportunity to really contribute and make a difference as one individual and here's an opportunity to join an organization that allows you to not only individually contribute but the sum of the total volunteerism makes an impact both in the state of Connecticut and nationally as well. And you know, uh, thank you for that Vita. I hear that a lot from mm -hmm. volunteers that uh, they want to do something that is going to be rewarding, mm -hmm. it's going to be meaningful, uh, that they feel like they can make mm -hmm. a difference. And then I have to add to that also fun. Mm -hmm. We do, uh, your, your free time should be fun also. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and there are times we deal with very serious is issues like caregiving is a big one mm -hmm. and we'll talk about that uh, you know making sure that Medicare and Social Security remain solvent mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know making sure that people age comfortably mm -hmm. in their own communities with quality and dignity that's our mission uh, but we want to make sure you're having fun and a good time and I, I want to make sure during the program that we mention some of those events uh, that are also really fun I, I'm going to take a quick moment to mention one that uh, uh, we've done, which is a wine tasting. Uh, so who knows, we may be coming to your community at some time for a wine tasting. And uh, where we did that as one event, it was also an opportunity for us to engage mm -hmm. with the attendees about caregiving, uh, because we all, whether uh, we have been a caregiver, many of us are aging uh, longer in life, mm -hmm. so we may be in need of caregiving, so that's a big focus for us. So we do advocacy and outreach. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know you've, we don't, we don't silo those. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit about um, your actual on the ground experience. I know you've been involved in a couple different areas with us, both right. combining advocacy and outreach as well. Right. Well, the first uh, area that I volunteered in um, was as an advocacy volunteer. And that's the group that um, will go to the Capitol and lobby for different initiatives that are in support of um, uh, bills that we believe in in AARP, such as the Caregivers Act, um, uh, Work and Save. Um, we've gone over and, and testified around um, utilities uh, and, the, and the billing practices there. So that's exciting mm -hmm. because as a private citizen, you not only um, sometimes don't know the process, you don't get the opportunity. And so I think AARP through this, you know, this area helps you navigate the, um, the system you know, both the legislative system and the process. And it helps um, to um, educate the greater um, community as a result of that. Because the more I know when I'm having conversations with my family and friends, I can educate them on what's Absolutely. really happening versus what they thought was happening and, and why they should support it. So it gives me a chance to um, uh, engage and, and bring other people on board um, around these issues and show them a way that they can contribute as well. So I I think that's so important in, in um, engaging uh, people, you know, to care about the issues that 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 impact them. I've even heard on that note, legislators mm -hmm. uh, talk to ARP and say, you know, he, we we have volunteers that actually mm -hmm. testify at hearings or show up for press conferences, or if you're not interested in coming to the Capitol, mm -hmm. uh, which happens to be in Hartford in the legislative office building, you can mm -hmm. be active right in your own community with your mayors, mm -hmm. your select persons, your elected uh, officials and meet locally or forums there. And by the way, in advocacy, we always work in a nonpartisan way. Absolutely. But the legislators say that to hear that on the ground experience that you as an ARP volunteer bring to the Capitol mm -hmm. or to your elected official is so impactful. Yeah. I would want to add too um, that we don't go over just based on what we know. Um, AARP spends a lot of time uh, providing education and background for us. So we will attend seminars, we will attend sometimes workshops, we will look at um, emails or press releases, yep. um, we will have question and answer periods so we can understand the issue as well. And one of the things that's so impactful too when you go visit your, um, your uh, state representative or, or, or the senator you um, go in, in teams, so you're not necessarily yeah. there by yourself. Yeah. And so it gives the opportunity not only to build a strong advocacy team, 
but also to be able to um, build uh, on what we're saying and to um, you know be able to present the full issues. So I think that's been very um, very uh, helpful and very impactful too. In case somebody's afraid that they're going to have to go talk to um, you know one of their representatives, right, um, you know, right, alone, right. we we don't uh, go alone. And that's another thing, as I said, that's really. Um, impactful about being a volunteer, you're working with a, a total group or team of people. And one of the uh, things that AARP has started recently has been mm. the um, impact teams. Yes. So um, in addition to doing the advocacy work and some of the other volunteer uh, activities, I'm a member of the Greater Hartford Impact Team. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, of the, um, you know, one of the benefits of having an impact team is we're able to go out into the communities where we live Right. And to again have those conversations with our neighbors and our uh, family and, and people that we know around the issues that really impact um, AARP members and, the, and the, um, the 38 million people who um, are in that demographic in Connecticut, but also to really drill down sometimes on specific community um, you know, opportunities yep. that um, because we live in the community, we know the issues, we can talk with some authority uh, there as well. I think a lot of um, the advocacy work allows us to be educators or, or teachable moments, as we used to say, because just in a conversation, you may be able to change someone's mm -hmm. mind or position just because they now have information that they didn't have before, right, right. just through a conversation. And I think ultimately that is so important in uh, being able to change and, and drive different agendas. Yeah, absolutely, and our volunteers do such a good job of it. It's mm -hmm. that, again, the legislators tell us, mm -hmm. back to us, that on the ground experience, that personal story, and don't we need, Vita, more of that one-to-one -one kind of conversation absolutely. that often there mm -hmm. is not enough of, either maybe locally or certainly not, as much as we'd maybe like to see it uh, in Congress these days. So, right. you know, and back to what you said, if, you know, if, if issues, and we're issue oriented, again, we're mm -hmm. nonpartisan, so we don't endorse candidates, but we're very issue oriented. But if you are interested in that, uh, just to reiterate what Vita was saying, mm -hmm. you don't have to have any trepidation. We like to think that we do a lot of hand holding mm -hmm. in the beginning. We provide you with a lot of resources and uh, background mm -hmm. information so that when you go to meet with a legislator, you're there, there's power in numbers, mm -hmm. you're there with your peers, um, and, and that gives us power as well. You know, by the way, I, I think that Connecticut is um, the seventh oldest state in the country, or thereabouts, so we are one of the mm -hmm. oldest states. Absolutely. So that gives us the power, uh, but it also creates challenges uh, for us in the future right. as we age. So I'm gonna, uh, I wanna mention also, if you're interested in volunteering, we're gonna keep putting up our website and contact information, but I would love to hear from you personally. Again, I'm Elaine Warner. I'm the Program Specialist for Volunteer Engagement, so I'm the, uh, after this program, I would be the next person you would talk to about volunteering. You can call me directly at our state office in Connecticut, 860-548-3169. Uh, and you can also go to our website, www.aarp.org backslash CT. And on the right-hand side, you're going to see upcoming events. Come to our events. Register for our events. Say hello. Uh, you can meet me when I'm out there, other staff, Vita, and the other volunteers. That is the best way, as Vita said, you explore initially uh, before you decide the certain program area that you might want to take a deeper dive into. Now, speaking of program areas, mm -hmm. you mentioned work and save. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that our viewer really knows what that's about, but could you just speak to that particular uh, issue area that okay. we addressed? Okay. Um, we were looking at, uh, or the legislature doing some studies, looking at um, the number of people in Connecticut who had not saved for retirement. So as you mentioned, we are um, a, sort of an aging state with, right. uh, you, know, um, you know, 30 million uh, people over 50. So this really um, impacts more the group that hasn't yet retired, who might have insufficient savings. 50 to 64 year olds. Exactly. Else. And there were a number of studies done to uh, look at the data to mm -hmm. say um, that they have not sufficiently saved. And what that would mean would be a negative impact on the state by the time that they reach retirement because they didn't have sufficient funds to uh, be able to take care of their needs post-employment. And so Work and Save um, became a, a, a program or a, a something that we advocated that allowed uh, people to save while they're working, and there were some parameters around that. And um, they would be invested, um, you know, uh, for the time that they were there right. from the state, and it would have zero cost impact to the state. So it would be the um, the worker and um, being able to save based on the worker's contribution, not the employer's contribution, 
and over a period of time when they got ready to retire there were some requirements that they would be able to take that money out so it, it was sort of a, a supplement for those and um, in the conversation with our legislators when we first started to um, advocate for this they were very supportive of it because after we were uh, could explain the impact uh, to the state uh, which they were probably aware of but we were able to also talk about uh, thinking about people that we know Right. and in their current situation mm -hmm. and with some of our legislators they were in that demographic as well right. so what if you didn't have a retirement plan right and you reach retirement age what would you do mm -hmm. and you know helping them think about the importance of supporting this so um, we are um, you know moving forward with that and I'm, I'm pretty excited about um, where it is now we're yes still and, and thank it. you for being mm -hmm. part of that whole thing uh, you know we're, we're hoping that it will be uh, mm -hmm. effective yeah. soon uh, mm -hmm. In, in the next year, uh, so You're we're hopeful. in the process mm -hmm. of educating people. Mm -hmm. We've actually had uh, three volunteers that were on a board mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that were helped to move that forward. So we're very uh, proud of that as well. Uh, and there's, I, I just want to make the point again. There's 600,000 people in the state of Connecticut right. that do not right now have an opportunity to save at work, and that we all know that that is the mm -hmm. best vehicle right. for saving. So, and again, back to a lot of us are living longer, so we don't want to outlive our money right. uh, and not age with quality and dignity. I also want to make sure that I mention we have a program that's extremely popular. It's called the Fraud Watch Network. Um, like me, if you maybe have a cell phone, use the internet, you get emails, uh, you see things coming in on the web that don't look quite right. Perhaps they are scams sometimes mm -hmm. and many times they are. We have a very um, extensive program where our volunteers are trained mm -hmm. to do presentations on protecting and preventing fraud. So when you give me a call if you're interested in volunteering, again, Elaine Werner in the ARP Connecticut State Office, 860-548-3169. You can ask me about the Fraud Watch Network. Uh, we also have a tax aid program, tax season. Uh, we know when that is every time of the year when you need to file your taxes. We have people that are trained to do that for free. We have one of the largest nonprofit uh, programs in the country for that. We have a driver safety program. And I don't want to forget to mention our newest, latest, and greatest, uh, Vita, Disrupt Aging. Uh, if you want to Google that, our CEO, Joanne mm -hmm. Jenkins, wrote a book called Disrupt Aging, and it is debunking the myths of <clears throat> aging. Uh, I think we're sort of in the same age mm -hmm. category, so we know, Vita and myself, we're aging differently mm -hmm. than our parents awesome. and our grandparents, so we are working intergenerationally with young people also right. in the mm -hmm. program. So it's very cool. So that's another program uh, you can ask me uh, about as well. Um, Caregiver Roadshow, mm -hmm. you know a little bit about that. Can you right. just give a little snapshot of what that is okay. for volunteers? Well, that was another uh, advocacy area that I was uh, privileged to be involved in, you know, when I first came um, on board. And I've been an advoca uh, advocacy volunteer or a volunteer for AARP for three years now. And um, one of the things that we did with the caregivers um, show, it basically uh, provides um, some um, respite for people who have been uh, get, getting out of the hospital or have chronic illnesses, that they are able to designate an individual that will be um, in receiving or in charge of the information for them mm -hmm. on how to take care of them once they're discharged. And I've seen this firsthand where uh, people are discharged and they're still groggy from maybe the anesthesia if it was a one day process and so they're giving them all the discharge mm. instructions and you get home and yes. nobody knows it's what. A blur. Yeah, exactly yeah. it's a blur. So this um, law was uh, said to um, uh, make that stronger that the that people can designate someone to be their caregiver in, in that instance and also uh, people with uh, chronic um, you know Ill illnesses or ailments as well you know such as Alzheimer's or um, you know uh, other uh, chronic diseases so this was very uh, important and it was um, uh, passed uh, about two years ago now I yep. think and um, I was um, having a meeting with um, you know my personal attorney on something entirely different and uh, she had not heard of the mm. law passing. So I was able to run out, get my booklet from AARP, and have this whole conversation with her. Mm -hmm. So she was better able to um, 
you know, uh, be informed in terms of servicing her clients and could follow up on that. So uh, that was one of those proud AARP volunteer yeah, moments. Yeah, well, I, love, I love that story. Yeah, so it's basically, you know, as I said, being able to educate uh, others in a, in a broader sense. And it doesn't take a, a, always a workshop or a seminar. It's just you have additional information, additional knowledge, and so you're helping everybody else make more informed uh, decisions. And I think AARP is um, really great in, uh, at doing that, mm -hmm. at arming us with information. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, uh, we have fun, um, <laughs> and we eat well. But really, uh, being passionate about uh, being able to affect change. And how often do we, as individuals, uh, get um, get an opportunity to affect big change right. uh, that impacts a lot of people? And I think AAR, AARP, as a volunteer um, uh, arm, allows us to do that. Well, as a staff person, I love to yeah. hear you saying that. Uh, back as a volunteer and you know we have many opportunities mm -hmm. to engage with the public uh, Vita was talking about uh, you know going out to the public in the mm -hmm. communities with the caregiver mm -hmm. roadshow we do that with broad watch presentations uh, and others or meeting with uh, elected officials either at the Capitol or in your local mm -hmm. community but we also do tabling events uh, we've been at the Latino Festival in Hartford we were a sponsor for the pink party in West Hartford we've been down at the shoreline uh, for the oyster festivals. Uh, we just did, I mentioned a wine tasting mm -hmm. down in the southeastern part of the state. Uh, we do free Fridays at the uh, zoo in the summer, towards the end of the summer. I can tell you more about that when you call me and our volunteers help staff those mm -hmm. events. So, uh, you know, we g engage with the public in all different ways. And back again to fun with purpose, mm -hmm. and we were just talking about right. caregiving. Uh, we've done healthy cooking demonstrations. Right. Uh, around the state as sort of a respite night for the caregiver mm -hmm. uh, because caregiving is not only about the person right. receiving care but the person giving the care so how can they cook healthily uh, we usually have a chef from a restaurant do mm -hmm. a demonstration mm -hmm. enjoy the food a glass of wine a soda whatever you like and an opportunity for us to engage and we do these kind of things from time to time all around the state again if you would like to explore our different program areas which is the best way to find out about us first um, if you're interested in volunteering you can go to our website aarp.org backslash ct and on the right hand side you're going to scroll down you'll see upcoming events usually we ask you to register for those events uh, and then uh, come and see us get to know us we can get to know you and then uh, we can talk uh, eventually after you attend some of our events about the appointment process. Um, so a couple of other areas I want to mention. Uh, we also have something called the Road to Livability. Mm -hmm. It's a new program for us too. Again, back to our mission so mm -hmm. that we all age mm -hmm. with quality and dignity in our communities. You know, as we get older, we have to look at where we live, stairs. Mm -hmm. How do we get to the grocery right. store? Should we still be driving? And I know sometimes, you know, you're, you're 50, 60 years mm -hmm. old and you're thinking, oh, I don't need to think about that yet. Mm -hmm. But you do. You if do. you, if you, uh, you know, want to age with quality and dignity. Um, we also do uh, Job Seeker right. events. Do you know about the Job Seeker events? Yes. You want to speak to that? Um, yes, yeah. I do. I, I participated in um, a, a panel discussion and, and some, a workshop on that with um, the uh, city of Hartford and the state government as well on behalf of AARP. And um, one of the things that's really important about that, um, as um, we are uh, sometimes downsized or we might retire and then realize we have to go back to work because of income insufficiency, uh, how do you get back into the marketplace when you're 50 plus? And there are a number of myths out there that um, if you're 50 plus, no employer is going to hire you. And um, what do you do to bring your skills uh, up to date and make them uh, make them current? And this particular uh, workshop um, is um, geared right at that, helping um, the demographic of 50 and over mm -hmm. understand how to apply for a job online. It's very different from the old resume that you used to have and okay. cover letter that different you used worlds. to have. Um, you know, how to market yourself and make yourself, um, you know, your skills stand out. And I think um, overall uh, skill sets and ability will trump the stereotype around age. You just have to be better prepared in how to go out there and market yourself and really seek the job that, um, you know, that best fits your needs. And this workshop certainly um, addresses that and it's very uh, interactive and um, provides um, opportunity for a lot of really good questions and uh, personal experiences that people share in the workshop that 
I found helpful. Sure, and you know, people did, you know, from the recession, mm -hmm. people in that, that age category, mm -hmm. the 50 uh, plus, they weren't mm -hmm. ready to retire, they needed a new right. job, had not written a resume in decades. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And social media, you have to use social media these days for resume writing or, you know, sort of rebranding yourself right. or personal branding. Mm -hmm. Uh, and how do you how do you work your resume a little bit differently? And we do a whole presentation on that. Mm -hmm. We've also done virtual trainings. Mm -hmm. uh, we right. also do teletown halls. Again, if you call me, Elaine Warner, mm -hmm. on staff, uh, volunteer engagement, 860-548-3169. I can tell you about those as well, but it's a way for you to get up to speed in the comfort mm -hmm. of your own home. And also, if you can't get out in the community, there are other ways for you to volunteer. You can become what's called an email activist, and uh, I can send you a form for that. So when an issue comes mm -hmm. up that may be important to you, you can respond to your elected official mm -hmm. you know, right from the comfort of your own home. So a variety of ways uh, to get involved. Another fun with purpose event, I want to mm -hmm. keep uh, mentioning them. We have something called Movies for Grownups. You might even know that when it comes to Oscar time uh, out in California, mm -hmm. people from the National ARP office mm -hmm. do Oscars on Movies for Grownups. And we have very famous actors, more in our age group, mm -hmm. uh, that are there uh, on site for the presentation. But we, uh, from time to time around the state, we offer movie a movie to AARP members in your community. It's also an opportunity for us to connect. Right. Uh, often there, there might even be a theme of a movie that connects mm -hmm. with this particular issue uh, that we are focused on, but an opportunity for you to see a movie for free uh, before it is even, uh, before you would have to go and mm -hmm. pay for it. And usually it can be up to like 10 days or so uh, beforehand, and that's called Movies for Grownups. And then often even some elected mm -hmm. officials may come and speak mm -hmm. there or our volunteers, yes. our volunteers help staff uh, those events. So uh, again, lots of different kind of opportunities and uh, fun with purpose events. Uh, let me uh, one more time uh, reiterate how you get in touch with mm -hmm. us. Elaine Warner, 860-548-3169. That's directly in the AARP office. And you can go to our website. Again, we encourage you to attend our activities, which are around the state uh, at aarp.org. Uh, backslash CT and then scroll down to upcoming events. So mm -hmm. not not too much time left, uh, mm -hmm. Vita, but if you were to, uh, again, you, you said such great things about your volunteering mm -hmm. experience, so it's heartwarming <laughs> to, uh, mm -hmm. and, and we didn't prep that with you no, at all. That's no. coming from the heart, so we really appreciate that. But anything else you'd like to speak directly to our viewer about if they're they're thinking like you, you know, I, I, if they're not retired, now you, uh, you know, we do have mm -hmm. about a third of our volunteers actually are still working, mm -hmm. so we've added more events in the evening and the weekends. But if somebody's thinking about it, uh, volunteering again, just to sort of summarize, you know, what, what would mm -hmm. be some things that you would add to that? One of the things um, that I liked about uh, AARP and the volunteer um, uh, aspect of it is that uh, there's no pressure to volunteer for everything. There are opportunities that are presented and if for some reason you can't because of scheduling or a conflict in calendar, there's no pressure, no hard feelings, you just move on to the next available opportunity. So that's one thing. And I, I, there's a mix of people I've met who are still working, but they volunteer for sometimes uh, for evening events. There are people who are uh, fully retired. There are people who are working part-time um, uh, as well. And I think there's, um, there's a place for every kind of um, AARP volunteer. So you may not want to go over to the legislature right. and walk around for hours on end, but you may be excited about um, one of the other programs or the, the movie events or the wine tasting events and to work that um, and be able to um, talk about the programs that AARP um, presents. So I think it's a great opportunity to become uh, more educated, to develop uh, further skills. Believe it or not, we're never too old to learn and uh, to be able to um, engage and get people excited about the process of contributing and making a difference. Well said, and uh, learning new skills. I mean, there's so many things that come with volunteering. Mm -hmm. First of all, if you're a job seeker, I'm a big believer mm -hmm. volunteerism could eventually lead to uh, meeting new people, mm -hmm. networking, uh, finding out about things that, you know, issue areas, programs that maybe right. could lead mm -hmm. to a next career step. Uh, we're, we try to uh, make sure that our volunteers have access to the latest technology mm -hmm. if they're inclined. Mm -hmm. So to keep your skills going, uh, that's critical. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. So all that keeps you energized and active. So there's sort of ancillary benefits, or it's social. Uh, you know, volunteers have become friends with mm -hmm. each other. 
uh, as a result of the volunteer experience with us. And Vita, mm -hmm. I just want to come back to one thing. You mentioned the regional impact teams. I know you're a member of the Greater mm -hmm. Hartford regional impact teams. We have regional impact teams around the state. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have one in the greater Bridgeport area, one in the greater New Haven area. We're building them out in other parts of the state, and that's where our volunteers, uh, we, we have a strong belief in being mm -hmm. local, and we mentioned mm -hmm. that before. Right. So you don't have to go to the capital if it's an issue. We mm -hmm. do things locally in your communities as well, and who's better to let us know what's going on locally than our volunteers in that uh, community. So we'll be building out other regional impact teams throughout the state, and members of those teams are all volunteers. Mm -hmm. And they come from all the different programs, which again are tax aid, driver safety, uh, fraud watch network, disrupt aging, road to livability. What am I missing here? Advocacy, uh, community outreach, many of the caregiving. Um, so there's many work and save. The list goes on and on. So we hope we've excited you. One yeah. last thought. We I have about a minute to go. Yeah, I just wanted to add uh, to what you were saying about the uh, regional impact teams. Um, you, you're not only limited to your area. You can go to any of the events that are in Absolutely. any part of the state. Yes. And um, as AARP reaches out to the whole state of Connecticut, that gives volunteers another opportunity to go out there and tell the message uh, and engage people in those areas uh, where we're not. I important yet. point, I'm glad you mentioned that. Anywhere in the state, we're a statewide organization, mm -hmm. AARP Connecticut. Vita White, my guest today. Thank you. Thank you for your volunteerism. Elaine Werner, uh, Program Specialist, Volunteer Engagement. If you are interested in wanting to learn more about volunteerism with ARP, please call me directly, 860-548-3169. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching. See you soon again right here in your local community. Thank you.